was sort of around that 15, 16 years old, I was pretty competitive as a runner, but I wasn't winning national chart titles or things like that. And my parents, um, we actually went to a World Cup in Sydney and I saw Kerry and enemies riding around in the velodrome and my mum was sort of elbowing me and saying, see, you look just like those girls, you, you feel just like them. One day my stepdad, whose family owned a bike shop, Bates Bikes in Hurstville in Sydney, he basically forced me to try the bike one day and quite literally just in that one moment on that one day I knew that I was going to be a cyclist and I participated in the training that day and I beat everybody there the boys included and the coach at the time came up to me and said if I had have ridden the same time on a track 100 meters longer I would be the Olympic champion like enemies and that was it like from that moment onwards I went home and I researched enemies when I first met Anna, it was at my first Australian Championships in 2006 and I was walking out of the velodrome as, um, no, I was walking into the velodrome as she was walking out and I had just won my first ever Australian Championships in the 500 metre time trial and she said to me, looks like we've got our next time trial champion, you know, on, on the verge and that was, I just was like, oh my God. Um, and then uh, I found myself in the same team as her and you know, ironically, the coach at the time, Martin Barassi, said this, the, actually the really critical thing that made me want to be, you know, as good and, and fighting up there with Anna, he said to me, oh, nobody would ever be able to get on Anna's wheel because she was so fast. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going to show him. And we went to a World Cup after the Beijing Olympics, after she came back from, from Beijing. And we did a World Cup in Denmark. And I did the first round in first position and um, then I did the final in second position and I got onto her wheel and that was sort of the beginning of our time together as, as a team. And 2009 through to 2012 was pretty amazing. And, you know, it was also a really big learning curve for me because we just didn't lose for a long period of time there. So it, it was just never an option. That expectation became quite great, particularly in that, that sort of final six to eight months leading into the Olympics and probably put too much pressure on myself and definitely learnt from that period of time. But, you know, Anna and I, as a, as a team, we really were formidable and we were formidable because we literally were the first two to training, we were the last two to leave. We dotted every T, we crossed every I. So in terms of like the best combination that you could possibly get for a team, I really think that we had everything that you could look for and that's why we were so successful. And the other thing is too, Anna knew how, how, how hard I worked. I knew how hard she worked and I didn't want to let her down. And I know that she didn't want to let me down either. My probably my career favorite would have to be my 500 meter time trial win on the Gold Coast simply because most, if not all of my success in my career has come through the team event, which, you know, I love that. I love sharing that, that top step with Anna, with Steph. But ultimately, I also wanted to do it on my own. I also thought I was good enough to do it on my own. And to do it on the Gold Coast in front of my friends and family was fantastic, particularly under the pressure that I was under. Steph had ridden before me and had ridden time faster than my personal best. And I knew she, she was going into those comm games to win four golds. So I'm quietly chuffed that I, you know, sort of subdued that dream of hers, but also really proud to be able to stand um, on the podium with her all four times during those Com Games and to, to celebrate that and to do a victory lap on my own. I had never been able to do that before. So going up into the crowd and, and seeing my family was just, you know, it gives me goosebumps still to this day. And um, it definitely is one of the moments that I'll cherish forever. Yeah, I think the 2019 Worlds was really just, I, I felt like I was just gaining my mo my momentum. I had always been told that, you know, the peak age for a female track cyclist was at 28 to 32. And in Poland, I was, I was 31. So, you know, I was really at that peak. And there to, to win the World Championship with Stephanie 10 years on, on the same track that I won my first World Championship with Anna, was just a again a fairy tale moment and as soon as I walked into that velodrome in 2019 I just thought yeah this is this is going to be a good week and it really was like I started off with the gold had a you know an okay sprint campaign then I was um, third in the 500 meter time trial which I'd always wanted to get on the podium I'd had a couple of fourths in my career so to finally do that was incredible and then to finish with the Kieran Silver you know, I remember warming up on the last day thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to go through another, you know, day five on a world championship program when you're already been digging deep. It's it's really hard. And 
I, I did just found something else and I guess when I crossed the line when, after all of those events in 2019 I really thought to myself wow I think Tokyo Gold is it's really possible. I'm incredibly proud of myself to see Tokyo through because um, as I mentioned I you know, Stephanie retired I had really quite a severe chronic back injury that I sustained um, late 2019 which really you know if there was anything that sort of really derailed my Tokyo campaign it was that injury and um, you know that was really tough I was still dealing with pain on a daily basis leading into Tokyo so um, I you know I forgot what it was like to not have back pain <laughs> so it's not really you know the nicest thing and that's probably what sparked mostly my idea of retirement my, my body just started not coping with the immense amount of work we have to put in to be able to go you know this much faster every year so um, just to get to Tokyo was an incredible achievement and the the, the result that I got, yeah, okay, it wasn't a gold medal, but I got a ninth and a 13th and I got back to my form prior to hurting my back off some really quite limited preparation. I think that's an achievement. And what I came to learn in my career over time was that success doesn't always look like a gold medal. Sometimes it is just, you know, a personal best or, you know, just fronting up and, and finishing something that you've started. I think what I hope people remember, remember me for is, yeah, okay, my medals and all my achievements have been fantastic and I will cherish them for the rest of my, my life. But I think the fact, for me, I wasn't the most talented athlete, right? I wasn't as talented as Steph, I wasn't as talented as Anna, but I was the hardest working, most persistent. Uh, you know, you I ask you how high you want me to jump and then I do a little bit more. So I hope that people remember me for the effort that I put in. Probably the most important people I have to thank is my family who, you know, pressured me to start on the track bike. Uh, I thank them for that now. But they've traveled all the way around the world with me and have been there in the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. So thank you to the, to, the, to my family, my, my partner, my boyfriend, Kevin, who you know, has no idea about anything about cycling, but he's also an athlete and he, he knows what it takes. And so he's been very um, helpful for me, particularly in the lead into Tokyo. And then I guess lastly and finally, to all the people within Oz Cycling who, you know, just like the athletes who have to turn up every day, the staff at Oz Cycling do the same thing. And I know that they also ride the highs and the lows with us. They, you know, felt our pain in Tokyo, but they also were able to celebrate with us in the Commonwealth Games. And I just want them to know that I personally just am so thankful because I know that I couldn't do what I did at the highest level for 15 years without the support of Oz Cycling.